Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and using text with the Field Blur filter. So first thing to do, got some text here, I just created it very quickly with some frame text and then I just filled it with some filler text. So some filler text in there. Now let's just go to filter and there's also layer as well, new layer filter layer. So I'll go through both of those. So filters and then down to blur and then field blur. So with field blur, what happens? It's actually quite a hard one to see actually with this one because of course with the white and the, the ring is white and black, same with the text of course, all you've got here is global radius and I'm just gonna push that up. And what it does, it blurs the whole thing. Let's just move that one out of the way as well. And some of these ones as well. So you've got the blurred design over here. And I'm gonna push it up to the max nearly. I'm just gonna make the whole thing blurred. What you can do, you've got selected handle level and you can reduce that down. Of course you can handle, modify that. But of course the best thing about it is you can add two of these handles or three or four or five. So I'm just gonna add another one, say up here. And what I can do, I can reduce the power, the level, I should say. Slightly confusing, you've got here power as well, so you can reduce. Now, if you sort of sucks it in, sucks the blur in, if you go, so slightly counterintuitive, I must admit. So personally, I think it should be the other way around, that actually that makes it nice and clear when it's full on, but they've got it the other way around. So that's the key to it. You've got to, so reduce it down, and then you get that area of fairly clear and you can reduce it obviously down to nothing and you get no effect there at all. And the blur is only sort of there and you can see it sort of spread out slightly, that thing, slightly different, unusual shape. It sort of seems as if it's going off. I'm not really certain what shape that is. Not a circle, but it's a sort of, sort of a spread to sort of like a, sort of as if there's a wind or something blowing, sort of dra dragging it off. So more elliptical. You can move it around. And as you go close to that, you can see it actually shrinks. So it actually gets to that point where it virtually on top, it literally virtually vanishes. So you can drag to the other side and you see it's blurry there as well now, just over that corner there. And you can drag over there and you can see the blur a bit more intense. And again, if I make it really full on, let's push the radius really up quite high. And you can do that, you can just see it as it goes, it's sort of like a solar wind, I think is the best way of describing it. This is sort of bursting out some sort of energy from that to spread it out the other way. And likewise that way, so you can go around it and as you get closer, weirdly it doesn't, it actually reduces. As you get closer it reduces, which is very odd. So you can just drag it out there and you can add more than one of course, you can add another one. And you've got that one there and you can move that one, so you can see that one pushes in, so it's all breaks into it, you can push against that. And you can put another one up there, and pushes into that one. You can see the same sort of effect. And you can reduce or increase the handle there, so you can get some interesting blur effects all the way around. So that one is about the same value as that. Now when you select them, you get this double ring option. Select, that's double ring, this one just becomes a single ring. And you can move it around like that, so it pushes against it. And then you can click apply. So you've got some very weird and wonderful blurred text. Now this is not live. This is a destructive effect. You've just sort of, that's it. You can of course fade it. You can apply a filter again, repeat fill, learn you can apply it again, but of course use exactly the same handles. But you can also go to a layer and fade as well. So you can create a sort of like a, some of this text. You can see it's slightly faded there, so there as well. Doesn't really have so much use with the blending modes. So if you go through these blending modes, like difference, whatever, there's not that much change. Sort of, so you can just go through that. Doesn't really hardly alter at all. So let's undo now. So that's back to normal. So what you can also do, and if you've got layers, let's just go to view, and maybe I've probably got it already. So view, studio, and layers. Yes, it's probably hidden away somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So layers there. Do that way. So with layers, what you can do, you can go to layer menu and new layer filter layer and then down to blur and fill blur there. And again, exactly the same thing. You've got this <coughs> pin, got this pin which you can move around. You can change the global radius and you can blur the whole thing, but you can also add another pin. So you've got that pin exactly the same as before and you can reduce that pin down the selected handle level. 
Again, you can push against that. It does exactly the same. And then, and then you can also modify that as well. So you can sort of create some very unusual effects that way. Also, what you've got, of course, and you can add more, of course. Let's just do that. You can vary the thing all over the place. So you can drag that out. But you've got blending modes and you've got opacity, so you can always reduce it down. So you've got sort of just a very, very subtle blur there. Just see that subtle blur, or you can push it past it up. And also you've got maybe go through this. Again, not particularly much use. Now, maybe if you've got different colored text, it might be a bit more useful. But obviously with this black, it doesn't really seem to make much difference. It's quite possible. So now what you can do, close that. And the thing is, the one thing with the other one, with the with the filters one, there's no presets, so you cut, you have to recreate the options. So you can just go to blur, fill blur, and you have to create all the handles again on the various levels. Whereas this, it's stored away in this fill blur, so you can double click on there. Sadly, there's no presets here either. I would love to see a presets feature in this. Lots of the app, lots of the filters in this would really benefit. This one maybe not so much, but it would be handy just to have some presets. I think. And of course, what you can do, oh, you can see some difference. Yeah, just linear. You can actually see that it does sort of linear light. Very subtle. Most of them do not really have much effect at all. Contrast negative, you can see the, see the contrast. But what you can do, you can also duplicate, of course. You go to layer, and you can duplicate. So you can create a couple more, maybe three or four. And you can blend between the two of those as well. And you can always remove it. And you can always, if you want, double click and bring it up again and just change the setting, as well as change the setting here, overlay, etc. So you go through there as well. And of course, what you can do, you can add other filters as well, uh, filter layers as well. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Photoshop, Illustrator, Painter, and many other applications. If you've got any comments, please put them in the comments and thing, because I might have done something wrong or something. You, think, you know what, you did that wrong. How did that work? No, it doesn't work that way. Always happy to, because quite often I have comments where it says suggest things, and it's always nice to get sort of things, you know, you should do this or do that with the, like the navigator. And I think, oh, interesting, useful ways of looking at things. A dislike or like, always appreciated either way. Thank you much.